It's another complication for Trudeau on an India trip. This happens to be one where a uh, moment in time in which uh, relations are perhaps a little more strained than they've been in the past. So, so each time Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau comes to India, he makes a fool of himself. And this G20 visit was not different. He was supposed to leave India after the conclusion of G20 summit on 10th of September Sunday. But he couldn't leave because his aircraft had developed some sort of snags and it just didn't take off. And if we look into history, then this is not the first time that he faced issues with his aircraft. Since Trudeau's been in office, his plane has broken down multiple times. In 2016, when he was flying to Belgium, then also the aircraft had returned back to Canada because it had developed some sort of glitches. Then in 2018, when he was coming to India, the aircraft had stopped in Rome for refueling, but again it developed some sort of technical glitches and his stay in Rome was delayed. Then in 2019, the aircraft hit a wall and suffered some structural damage and because of this, the aircraft remained out of service for 16 months and Justin Trudeau then was using another backup aircraft. But in the same year when he was flying for the NATO summit through that backup aircraft, then that backup aircraft also developed some snags and it was grounded in London. And apart from the aircraft issue, Justin Trudeau's New Delhi visit has been a horrible one and there have been several reports which stated that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had expressed utter disappointment with Justin Trudeau because the Canadian government was not doing enough to contain the anti-India activities which are going on right now in Canada. And finally, on Tuesday afternoon, Canadian Prime Minister left India and Rajiv Chandrasekhar, who is the Minister of State, was sent to the aircraft to see him off, but most probably he was just sent to make sure that Trudeau finally leaves India. So if we talk about that, what exactly is the issue between Canada and India? Modi raised the issue of what he calls anti-India activities of extremist elements in Canada. While Trudeau says he brought up foreign election interference by India in Canadian democracy. Then the issue is that Justin Trudeau promotes and aligns with the Khalistani supporters and either he does it because of the domestic compulsion or he does not understand that why this angers New Delhi so much or he just simply does not care and in fact Canada has been lenient with six separatists well before 1984 and in fact in 1982 when Pierre Trudeau who was a father of Justin Trudeau when he was a Canadian Prime Minister then he had declined India's request for the extradition of Khalistani terrorist Talvinder Parmar and under the protection of Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau Talvinder Parmar then masterminded the bombing of Air India's Kanishk aircraft which led to killing of 329 people most of which were Indian origin. We want to convey this message now please leave our land we are we need our own country Khalistan so there we have to clear them Our and while the Khalistani movement in India has largely died but still there is a very minuscule population of six in Canada that are highly internalizing the topic so given this background you can hardly blame New Delhi and rest of the India for what kind of relations right now we are having with Canada and in fact after G20 summit when Justin Trudeau went back to Canada then in the Canadian Parliament he stated that there have been several evidences and several proofs which says that Indian government agencies have been involved in the killing of another Khalistani terrorist activities and when Indian government asked for the evidence then there were no evidence and right now Canada has actually not shared any of the evidences which says that there is a link of Indian security agencies in that assassination. Credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen Hardeep Singh Nijar. But for the sake of argument, let's just assume that India was actually involved in the terrorist killing. But then this is something which has been going on for a very long time and there have been several Western countries. Now, for example, if we talk about Israel, then Israel have been killing terrorists all over the world for several decades. And in fact, if we talk about United States, then during Obama's time, there used to be a sign off on the kill list of terrorists. And then United States used to find those terrorists and then used to kill them either through drone strikes or through planned assassination. And this was also a practice which was going on under Donald Trump and there are no reasons to believe that this has stopped under Joe Biden. So to conclude, Justin Trudeau will keep up the pressure on India and will also try to release some of the evidences at the later stage and might also ask the Western countries to condemn India. But right now, no one is saying anything against India. Forget about putting pressure on New Delhi. Well, Justin Trudeau needs to understand that India of today is not the India of 1980s and 1990s when it was struggling with the insurgencies in the Northeastern and in the North 
North Western regions. India today confidently claims its position in the global landscape and India has opposed the Western sanctions on Russia and it has firmly stood its ground against China and has successfully sidelined Pakistan at the international stage. So thank you so much for watching the video and Namaste Ji.